second. <laughs> All right, it is that time. I call this Utah Transportation Commission emergency meeting today, Thursday, July 14, 2022 at 1 p.m. via Google Meet in order. This meeting will be live broadcast via youtube.com slash Utah DOT. Anchor location is the Nord Conference Room, Calvin Compton Complex in 4501 South, 2700 West, Taylorsville, Utah. Welcome everyone. For the record, we would like to make sure that we introduce the commission first, and then you're gonna stay online and I will call also at the end to make sure you were there with the voting. When I ask you your name, please state your name, your jurisdiction, your responsibility for the record. I start with the com Commissioner Kramer, please. Lou Kramer, Commissioner at Large from Salt Lake City. Thank you. Commissioner Law, have you joined us yet? I move on to Commissioner Evans. Uh, Commissioner Jim Evans, uh, representing Region 3, uh, live in Orem, Utah. Thank you. Commissioner Van Tassel. Commissioner Kevin Van Tassel, I'm state at large and I live in Vernal, Utah. Thank you. Commissioner Gauckner. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie Gauckner. I'm a transportation commissioner for Region 2. Good to be with you today. Thank you. Commissioner Mendel, have you joined us yet? Not yet. And my name is Nagi Zanadi. I am the privileged of the chair of the commission, and I'm charming from sunny, partially overcast, cool St. George, Utah. Okay. Commissioner Nagy, this is uh, oh, Commissioner. Oh, yes. Please go ahead. This is Commissioner. I'm Commissioner Rhonda Menlove. I live in Garden City, Utah, and I represent uh, Region 1. Thank you. Good to see you, Commissioner. Terry, you want to introduce you and the UDOT when you're in the complex? Hey, I'm Terry Newell, Deputy Director for UDOT, and maybe we'll just go around the room with the UDOT people and then we can list those online. Uh, Heather Barkhold, Commission Assistant. Lisa Wilson, Deputy Director, Engineering and Operations. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, Carrie Ann Noble, Technology and Innovation. Bob Tully, uh, UDOT State Coordinator. Cheryl Hirsch, Chief Structural Engineer. Peter Asplin, Deputy Director of Policy and Legislative Affairs. Ben Hewitt, Program Development Director. Looks like we also have online Brett Slater, Carmen Swanwick, Grant Potter, Jody Howick, Jordan Lee, uh, Mitch Shaw, Monty Aldridge, Nathan Peterson, Rob Clayton, and Wyatt Woolley. Thank you. Thank you very much. And all the public's also welcome. At this time, also, I would like to be half a commission welcome Monty Aldridge and congratulate him for being our region director, region four director. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much. Item number two in the agenda today is public comments. I would like to ask anyone, let's see, did I see Commissioner Law joined us? I did. Please introduce yourself and your jurisdiction. Hi, um, my name is Donna Law. I'm a commissioner at large and my home is in Cedar City. Thank you. You're welcome. So the public comment section, anyone from the audience and the online, anyone in the conference room, please introduce yourself and speak to Mike. Mr. Chairman, we do have someone in the conference room from the public who'd like to speak. And I think if you can just, he can just, Cameras right there. So if you want to just uh, speak from where you are, you're good. Okay. If that worked for you, uh, I, I hope I'm in the right meeting. First of all, I'm, my name is Steve McIntyre. Uh, I'm a resident of uh, South Jordan, Utah. I live on 114 South in Gold Dust Drive. Uh, I'm probably a little unprepared because I've only notified about this meeting at, at a quarter after 12. I filed a grandma request uh, with South Jordan City. Uh, 
last week and they've gotten back to me today and in a large portion of the information they said that they could not provide because the information that I'm looking for needs to come from UDOP. I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, as I go on. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about 114 South between Redwood Road and Bangor. Uh, in the last five and a half months, we've had lifelike land three times on my corner. Uh, and unfortunately, two of those people didn't make it. Last week, it was an eight-year-old boy. Uh, his partner in crime is a 10-year-old boy that I don't know is going to make it. And I was involved in 114th at the very beginning, which I was thinking driving up here, it was about probably 15, 16 years ago, maybe somebody in the room knows when they widened 114. You took a fair share of my property and my neighbor's property and it all made sense. The growth in that part of the valley had to take place. And a lot of the things that we talked to you about then, I wanna to talk to you again about. The speed is just, it's posted at 45 and I, I've heard the average speed is 62 to 67 or kind of depends on who you talk to, but it is a real speed trap or I guess it's not a trap, it's just a, a real speed road. I have petitioned South Jordan City to get a report on the amount of uh, calls that are responded to on 114th on a daily basis with sirens and lights going. And they're working on that right now. And I think I think when they get that done, we'll all be pretty amazed. Uh, we're not going to stop the growth and the road needs to be there. And I get all that. But I think there's a lot of things that we can do with safety. Is there, is there a map by any chance that you could see? Or should I just, could you pull up that area by any chance? Do you have that ability? If you submit those to our secretary beforehand. So, I think what we can pull it up. Mr. Okay. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Where, well, I say that and Karen Ann is, <laughs> I, I make a commitment for somebody else. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> I asked that, but my technical skills couldn't pull it up. So <laughs> you get it done great. <laughs> but one of the things I want to talk to you about is basically between Redwood Road and 32. She's, she's sharing it now so that people the video can see it. So between those sorry, sir. Redwood Road, okay. which is 1700 West and 3200 West. So go just a small go there west. Okay. Going there. Yeah. Yeah. Need to go, go right a bit further west. Okay. There's a river. Right there. So from that section to 3200 West is, is kind of the area that I'd like to concentrate on. And if you could just stop at the equestrian park, which is just about there. Let's just go up one more street. Okay, you just go a little further and you can see the corner of Gold Dust Drive. You'll move your map up. Oh, this way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, whoops, not by that. Oh. Right? We'll put 114th right in the middle. Went right in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And well, then, well, no, I think he went vertically. Vertically. Yeah. <laughs> and just go to little the right side. a little bit. County. Yeah. There we go. Gold Dust Drive. Okay. That's where I'd like to at least start. If, and if I take up too much time, you're more than welcome to stop me. I didn't have an appointment or anything else. And so, well, and, and, and sir, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I wasn't here when you gave your name. Uh, my name is Steve McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre, Carlos Rosero, sorry, Mr. we would love to have our Region 2 office spend more quality time with you in a, in a probably a more of a dialogue situation, but feel free to. Okay, that'd be good. Because one of the things I'm asking is when was the last time you did a study on this road? And two, if it hasn't been in the near future, what could we do about it? But that corner of Gold Dust Drive and 114, like I said, air flights landed there three times this year. The traffic, we have developed six lanes of traffic going 60 plus miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour speed limit we haven't made any when you built this road we came to the commission and asked you if you would put a light at gold dust drive 
and you elected to put the light at 2200 West. And we questioned that at the time because that goes into a dead end subdivision then, and it still does today, 15 days later or 15 years later. You told us the reason you were putting the light at 2200 West is because the long range plan was to widen, widen that road to a four lane road. When you widen it for sidewalks, you didn't widen. We still have a two lane road with sidewalks on each side now. Our subdivision, Gold Dust Drive, we have no sidewalks. The traffic going in and out of the equestrian park, and I've got some numbers for you just to give you some ballpark numbers. I sat on the equestrian board for seven years. But in 2019, we had 170,000 paid entrance to that park. With every paid entrance, you can count two or three vehicles, horse trailers, campers, motorhomes, those types of things. This year alone, we've had 49,962 paid entrance for the first through May. The traffic coming in and out of, of the equestrian park that funnels into Gold Dust Drive. The reason I wanted you to pull up Gold Dust Drive, and this is not a UDOT problem, it's a city problem, but Gold Dust Drive is the only road that connects 114th and 118th without a stoplight. Every other road going up and down 114, the subdivision is connected with the stoplight. So now what you have, you force the traffic out of the polo port force your way out into the middle center lane to turn to go right or you force them out to turn to go left and if you do the same thing in the neighborhood my question to you today and i don't know if you're, you have the ability to even answer this is why and, and mr chairman I, I think that the the format of this meeting is to offer comments to the commission and i think you know, yes. to Carlos's point, what we would like to be able to do is follow up with you with our region office who can sit with you and talk through this and try to help and, understand and the great. issue and then and be able to answer I like said, I didn't know what really the starting point was. But I, and, and I think there's some very safe options if you if you elected not to do a study or if you elected not to put in a line. But if you, you could start by just uh, forcing people to go right instead of across six lanes of traffic it would be inconvenient for me as a property owner but it would be so much safer i watch it uh, I, I appreciate you bringing up the idea of a raised island uh, that not too many uh, citizens have come out and supported such a thing no they don't <laughs> they don't because it's an inconvenience yes. but again ladies and gentlemen we buried a little boy last week you probably all saw it on the news it's on my property or he died but he's not the only one in Maine, we probably lost a young man at that same corner for the same reason. And it, it's not just that corner, right? You know, in, in the long range, you need to figure out something with speed. And I don't know how you do that. Uh, it's become the local racetrack for young people. And they have a system, which my neighbor boy explained to me, is that one of them parks in a parking lot. His buddy who he's going to race is on a phone. So they talk on the phone while he comes up the street. When he gets within 200 yards, he pulls out. He pulls up alongside him and they race. They get up the street and they split. It's, it, it's a game they play. He explained the whole thing to me and it, it makes a lot of sense how they're doing it because it goes on day and night. But again, you, we build a nice road and we move a lot of people. So. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, or if not, I appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I promise you we are in the business of saving lives. The UDOT and UDOT family, the commission, every tragedy is precious, and we learn from it, and we hope that we can go forward and try to get the best solution. Before you leave, please share your name and contact information with the people in the office, in the conference room. And the region director and the city official maybe will have this some kind of meeting together to resolve okay. the uh, concerns that you have, Mr. Okay. Chairman. If I could just interject really quick, yes. I'll just say I'll just say that this is this is great timing. We we do have a corridor study underway for 114th South right now, so this would be great feedback for that study. Yeah, get, just leave your contact information. And we'll get there. Please, thank great. you, Robert. Thank you, Robert Stewart, region two director. My bad.
we will take care of it, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your concern. Our Thank heart goes to your family and the rest of the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments from the conference room or the public online? I see none here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Would you please, for the record, introduce yourself, also, Carlos, and welcome? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Carlos Brissett, Executive Director, Utah Department of Transportation. Sorry for being here. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. So we're going to item number three in the agenda, program development. Item number A is 2022 STIB Amendment number 10. So we have presentation and we'll have a screen. Commissioners, we have one item uh, today, 3A-1. This is the Devil Slide Bridge near Cordy, Croton. Uh, down. I'm but, sorry. For the record, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, Commissioner. I'm sorry. My name is Robert Pellin. I'm the SIP coordinator. Okay, thank you. Uh, the request today is to add $1.1 million to the uh, Devil's Slide Ridge project. This project <clears throat> was recently bid for the second time with the low bid coming in at $1.1 million higher than our engineer's estimate. This bridge is an off-system structure maintained by Morgan County that is the critical bridge servicing the community of Croydon and the Holcomb cement plant. The tight work constraints, winter work window, inflation, and remote location has caused the bids to be higher than anticipated. The project team has reviewed the bid and is making the recommendation to add the needed funds in order to award this project. Slide this down and there's a map location. And where the cursor is in the middle of is, is this, that structure area. Let's stop with I-84. Here's a picture. So the recommend the request today is a motion to approve adding funds for the Devil Slide Bridge project as detailed. Mr. Chairman, go ahead, please. Uh, I'd like to back in the early in the mid seventies. I spent a lot of time at this location. We were all the water out of the river up to the overfield. And I tell you that bridge is for a off rural bridge that you really use a lot and uh i can if you look back at that picture you'll see that the exits there almost exit right on this bridge so i understand the importance of getting this done uh i think probably i don't know what the percentage is but i'll bet it's 30 or 40 percent of the concrete that is manufactured comes across this bridge in the state of Utah. So that's my comment. And if you'd like me, I don't know, Rhonda, maybe you ought to make the, the motion. Let you Thank speak. You. Thank you, Commissioner. And I'm agreeing with you about the importance of this bridge and express my support and I'll make a motion that we move forward with the additional funding. Okay. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. As a comment also, we have seen this before and the reason we're doing the emergency commission meeting because we cannot wait until next scheduled meeting in Cedar City. The nature of the this particular project is needs to be done and done quickly. So for the public and commission record, that's the reason. Okay. Hey, hey. Any other questions, concern? Seeing none, I'm going to call for the roll call. State your uh, motion. State your uh, vote. Commissioner Kramer. Unmute yourself, please. Expect me to be able to do both things. Uh, Commissioner <laughs> Kramer, I vote yes. Thank you. Oh. Commissioner Law? Commissioner Law, yes. Commissioner Evans? I vote yes. Commissioner Van Tassel? 
I vote yes. Commissioner Kaufner. Commissioner Kaufner, yes. Commissioner Manlov. Commissioner Manlov, yes. And my vote is yes. So it's unanimous. Thank you. Bob, any other thing? Commissioner, that, that's all that's on the agenda for today. Those funds have been added. Thank you. So it's my understanding then that this is necessary to be able to complete the bid that we have in hand. Is that correct? So. Yes, that is correct. We will award the project here this week and they'll they'll build this, they'll replace this structure this winter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. So the next item of agenda is information items on which we have August 12, Cedar City location for our UDOB meeting, regular meeting. So August 12, Friday in Cedar City. Any other questions? Any other comments? Carlos, Terry? Mr. Chairman, it looked like Commissioner Law had a question. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to add the fact that I know they're preparing a staff update and a tour on Thursday. Uh, we're also looking at doing lunch and perhaps an active transportation experience prior to the um, prior to the staff update, the tour, and then also dinner. You will be receiving information about um, opportunities to attend the Utah Shakespeare Festival as well, which wow. I highly encourage. <laughs> wow, that's great. Well, okay then, who's gonna top that one for next meeting? Uh, no one, you're coming to my town. I want you to feel comfortable. We are all so excited that you're coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. St. George, I can help at Tuacon, you know, Nagi. So <laughs> don't let us be upstaged by just this Shakespeare fellow. <laughs> don't give it up, give it away yet, Commissioner. Yeah. Chris. <laughs> we got Buddy Holly going right now at Tuacon. If you, sure. if you remember those days, nobody on here is old enough to remember that except me. Jim, I know him. Yeah. Commissioner Fantasi, you had a question. Okay. Uh, I, I have a conflict that's come up. Uh, Scott Anderson is coming out to Vernal on the 12th. We dedicate or the grand opening of the parcel post bank is now complete. And that's the date that's been selected. And I don't have all the details yet. So I might need to join by Skype or once I get those information, I'll communicate that okay. to him. We are I, I kind of need to be there. Okay. Congratulations on that, Kevin. It's going to be. Uh, I regret that I have a conflict that's taking me to New York on that day. I think I could join remotely, but I can't be in person. Nobody goes to New York. We go to Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Anderson and Zions Bank is uh, doing the ribbon cutting tomorrow for the major uh, $150 million down um, Murray complex. That's going to be a big deal here for us in Utah, Salt Lake. Well, it's a it, it's a historical event for Vernal to maintain that old brick, I guess. Yeah. Well, we're seeing a lot of orange uh, construction cones everywhere. It's exciting, and thank you for the hard work, uh, all of all of our wonderful Utah colleagues. It's just and now if they could just teach the people in Salt Lake City how to fix city streets, right, Natalie? We'd be happy. <laughs> Drive slowly, for heaven's sake. Drive slowly. We're having a hard time to get the people to slow down and watch for the pets and bicycles and any other. So please help your dog, help yourself and help your citizens. Teach them to go slowly. Don't drive stupid, as yeah. we say, in our diplomatic way. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask for one more motion, please. So Okay, it's not debatable. Thank you. Thank you, Commission, for taking time. Thank you, UDOT family, to give us the opportunity to serve. Thank you, public, for expressing your feelings. And we're going to make it. So, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Good weekend. Thank you very much. Bye. Congratulations to Monty, too. Thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> thank you. Yes.